you know, September and October is a great time of year to find all sorts of mushrooms and fungi, but we have barely had any rain the past two months. And this particular park is closed every other week due to deer control. I'm not sure about that. But there are these Lycagala epidendrum. These are one of my all-time favorite fungi to find uh, just because they're really cool. They're also called wolf's milk. I'm not really sure why, but have a closer look. So Lycos means wolf. Gala is a Greek word for milk, right? Wolf's milk. Epidendrum means on a tree or upon a tree. Some translations lean towards the word lovely being mixed in there. Now, I don't understand why wolf's milk is pinkish. Okay, so get this. Here I am poking this wolf's milk, letting you guys see that toothpaste stuff that comes out of it and how interesting it is, right? And then I stop filming and I move about my business. Well, here I am walking through the woods and then I stop dead in my tracks because I'm like, whoa, wait a second here. I'm talking about wolf's milk. Wolf's milk is a slime mold, right? Well, slime molds are not fungus. <laughs> Get ready for this. Slime molds are large, single-celled organisms that are very similar to amoeba. Yeah, these things are not plants, they're not fungus, they're basically creatures. Let me tell you about it. Slime molds basically start out as tiny little slug-like organisms that inch their way along the landscape, feeding on things such as yeast, fungus organisms, bacteria, but they sometimes even feed on other slime molds. Yeah. And get ready to take this to a whole nother level. These slime molds will actually spread out, feeling their way around looking for different food sources. When it finds something it likes, its whole body will kind of go in that direction and then form around it. And it'll look like a whole bunch of, say, highways or railroad tracks going over a, a, a patch of land. And when they find spots they like, little bits of food, they'll form these little junctions around it. If there's something they really like, the whole thing will converge right on that. So it's something that can reach out with tendrils, almost like roots or veins, but it can also move as a, as a large circular object. They exhibit behavior similar to that of muscular animals. They can move through mazes, they can learn, that'll be in a future video, and even avoid light. So over time, these plasmodiums will be feeding on things and they'll form together forming a larger single-celled organism with millions of nuclei inside, but it's still considered a single-cell organism. So the year starts to grow older and the seasons get a little bit colder. These plasmodiums then start to form these dome-like structures with the spore bodies within them. Take wolf's milk, for instance. That is an orangey goo within it. And as it matures, it becomes this brown paste, a lot like clay. When these things are ready to go, they'll open up. That, that pasty stuff inside will be dry and millions of spores will flood out into the landscape, ready to start off new generations of this single-celled organism. There are at least 700 species of slime mold out there. You've got the tapioca slime molds, which are giant white ones, you know, 12 to 14 inches in diameter. Then you have the chocolate tube slimes, which I'll show you right here. There's dog vomit slime, which is a bright yellowy patch of stuff. And of course you got wolf's milk, the Lycagala epidendrum and many more. I'm gonna start keeping some of these things as pets and they're really neat to watch too. So looking back at that, I was poking these wolf's milks, right? <laughs> but I'm not poking a mushroom or a fungus, I'm basically stabbing a creature with a stick. So <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be doing that anymore. I mean, that's kind of signs of being a demented individual poking some living creature with a stick until this ooze comes out of it. Well, we live and learn, don't we? Okay, so as you can see, slime molds are crazy, crazy organisms. I've been planning on having a dedicated video on these things, you know, for a few years now. I just never got around to it. But after filming this wolf's milk and thinking about it, 
yeah, there's definitely one in the near future. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit. Chris Ignato, signing out.